I wouldn't go through a pat down to go to the mall, no. So they're on the buses, they're on the trains. What if a day came when you got a random checkpoint as the TSA wanting to check your car? Would you feel okay with that? Oh, uh, I think so. Tennessee is now the first state ever to work with the TSA to deploy a simultaneous counterterrorism operation statewide. What if for some reason they decide maybe they want to do random checkpoints and check you in your car? You know, this was a massive operation really bringing all federal, state, and local agencies together to not only do random searches, but also create an army of agents on wheels. Would you guys be okay with that if they had a random TSA checkpoint to search your car? Well, that's happened to me at other airports like in Los Angeles. Your uh, vehicle has been inspected alert. under the TSA regulations. So that's in the L.A., they do it all the time. All the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, uh, you guys had the incident at the L.A. airport, right? That was just a couple months ago. Yeah. yeah. And do you, you think any uh, additional security could have ended that? Yeah, having someone there who, who was uh, armed, you know, with more than just uh, a walkie-talkie or whatever. Less crowds. Less crowds. L.A.'s a madhouse. What if, you know, the day came when they started doing random checkpoints, you're driving in your car and you get pulled over, it's TSA one to check your car? No, not for probable cause. Well, what's the probable cause here at the airport? I mean, it's not a probable cause at the airport, but it's a little bit dangerous when you're getting on a plane and now nobody can no longer get to you. You cannot get to anybody else. You know, if I'm in my car, you don't have a reason for me to just search my personal space. You know what I mean? So, so you have rights, Fourth Amendment rights. Yeah. Good, bad, or indifferent, whether they love it or hate it, the people we spoke to today are at least content to put up with these measures at the airport, trading their liberty for security. Jakari Jackson reporting for InfoWars Nightly News. You can find more reports at prisonplanet.tv and infowars.com. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% Made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans. Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit madein1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. What's your question? How can I help you? Okay, well, question one I'd like to ask is what, what exactly was the purpose for that video? What is it for? Um, it was just a comical parody video. Um, I've been doing parody videos for a long time, and I'm interested in the subject of TSA groping and fondling, which has been in the papers and news and YouTube all over the place. So I decided to exercise my First Amendment right and made a funny video. That's all. Well, the second question is, why would you do such a video comparing our hard workers to Nazis and Adolf Hitler? 
well, you guys are kind of dictator-like, and tell people if they make jokes about the TSA, you're going to arrest them, and, and yeah, there's it's plenty, it's plenty of video out there. I mean, no disrespect, there's plenty of video out there showing you guys doing all this crap, grabbing grannies and kids. Are you serious? My concerns are our workers are being portrayed as criminals when they're here to protect us from terrorists. They do that on a daily basis. And, and how many terrorists have you guys caught since day one of this program? It's our main focus of our department to to hunt terrorists and look for them on every situation we can find. And how many have you found? You haven't found any. Now, tell me how many numbers, how many terrorists have you stopped from doing any kind of plots against America? Since the we TSA... We potential terrorists every day in the airports all across the world. Really? What, Americans? Many workers have already seen them. They've already seen your video and find it very offensive. And our workers have families with children, sir. Really? How would you feel about it if one of their kids came across your video? Um, people that look like their parents groping people. Well, I, that really happens. They can go into YouTube and type in TSA groping, and hundreds of videos will come up. Why does mine spark your attention so much? Are you serious? Fellow employees, we would like to request you take this video down immediately. And if you're not willing to comply, we will pursue getting your video removed from YouTube by all legal means and take you to court for defamation of character. Defamation of character, you guys are a bunch of child molesting and criminal perverts. Go ahead and take me to court. Go to hell. I don't give a crap. Do what you got to do. We're prepared to take action if you don't comply by this. Yeah, I and bet. If you don't comply, they're going to take some serious action, I'm telling you. Wow, are they going to go extra deep and full cavity search at me at the airport next time I come there, or what? You, know, you can say whatever you want, but you can <laughs> see your name flag when traveling the airways. Oh, wow. I would take the train anyway, because I want to get groped by you perverts anyway. So you go ahead and do what you got to no, do. We well, that was a response to an entry in our We Will Resist NSA and TSA Tyranny Contest. Now, that entrant was Tully Leatherface Blackwood. He also was an entrant into the Operation Paul Revere Contest, and he got into a lot of trouble. It caused him a lot of problems with his Off the Hook TV YouTube channel. So we want to talk to him about that phone call and about his entries and his past experience. What he thinks is behind this. Welcome back, Tully. It's been an interesting uh, time every time you get involved in a contest. Now we've got another one. We'll talk about that other contest and all the aftermath that came out of that. But tell us briefly what happened with this phone call from somebody claiming that he was with the TSA. Well, briefly the day before, I had received a phone call. I was actually up in the hills at my buddy's house. And it was the same guy. I said his name was John C. <clears throat> and I started sending us from TSA. And he asked me questions for me. And so I pretty much just, I'm like, man, I wish I can record this. So I was like, hey, can you, like, just call me back tomorrow? I can't hear you very well. My reception's terrible. And he was like, yeah, that'd be fine. So I'm like, great. So as soon as I got off the phone, probably a couple hours, within a couple hours, I went ahead and downloaded an application to where I can go ahead and automatically record phone calls. Then the next day I got the phone call. Now, he said he was with the TSA. Did he ever give you a name? Did he... Uh when you talked to him either time? Or did you get a phone number? He did see a thing with John. Um, the first time he seen a thing with John C. The mm -hmm. second time around, he just said John. Um, he The phone number was a private number, so there was no source to show where it was coming from. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was said. Now, you had a lot of trouble with the previous contest, with the Paul Revere contest. And in that contest, you did a... It was a video, to be free to recap, people that hadn't seen it. Uh, George Washington sends someone to fetch Michael Moore and Piers Morgan for a kind of waterboarding. And you got some angry pushback from Michael Moore on Twitter, and that went viral. And then after that, your YouTube channel got shut down. Do you think this was related to that in any way? I don't think it's related. Um, I pretty much think it's probably the same kind of frustration. Somebody's seen it and felt a little offended. You know, I can't confirm, you know, or know for sure if that was a TSA person, but... Mm -hmm. The point is, they got across, it's getting the point across, and that's the good thing, good part of the goal of this whole video. Well, that's, that's good. Now, you know, when it happened before, it was really an amazing Catch-22 situation, and it was a good example when they took your entire channel down and deleted your Gmail account. It's a good example of what they really want to do to everybody with CISPA, and that is basically if anyone 
makes any kind of a claim against you, they would just shut your channel down, shut your website down, whatever. And it's up, the burden of proof is on you to try to uh, get that started again. And yet, in this situation, you had kind of a catch-22 where you, you couldn't even correspond with them because they shut down your Gmail channel and they wanted the Gmail channel to talk about the YouTube channel, right? Yeah, it was a total running around. You couldn't really get anything done or get anything accomplished. It was really you know, a major run around and a major hassle to get my channel back in. So whoever this was, it was kind of interesting. This happened on the same day that we got a FOIA request that uh, the Muslim Brotherhood was just allowed to pass through, given a VIP pass, even before anybody from their organization was in the government of Egypt. And uh, they, they just got a pass from TSA. We see that this is something that really seemed to bother somebody, whether it's somebody that didn't like you from the previous contest or somebody who's now a TSA employee or maybe even the official TSA channel. Of course, they're not going to say anything about that. They won't even confirm or deny that anybody's on their secret no-fly list. So I'm sure we can't get any response from them. I think Mikhail Thalen, who did this, uh, tried to contact them and couldn't get any response from them. We didn't expect them to. But Yeah, it's hard to get a response from anybody on anything these days, it seems like. So, <clears throat> you know, it's I was, I was kind of leery at first. I didn't know exactly what was going on here and i was like oh boy um, do i go ahead and play along with this or do i go ahead and just pull off are you recording me and if not hang up kind of deal or how do you think they got your number is your number listed or <clears throat> my number is all over the place i was you know you know i'm an actor and been out in the media a lot i never really hit or tried to be much of a private person okay and I, I enjoyed interacting with people and fans and even since the viva the bam thing in 2004 up to this day, I still get calls from fans, and you know, I, I talk to them, and you know, I give them time. You know, I went from them, I wouldn't be where I'm at. You know. Now you you've been a professional wrestler. You've had the Off the Hook TV channel on YouTube. Of course, that was one that was taken down and inactive for several months. So that that really damaged you being offline. But are you still going to continue doing that? Uh, we're still going to do little Off the Hook TV videos here and there. Um, mm -hmm. But primarily now, we're still focusing on the prescription for murder, um, so, <clears throat> documentary, and we also have a couple other movies, motion pictures, we're actually in plan for filming as well. Okay, I, yeah, that's right. You've got a documentary that you're working on that's uh, related to health issues. Well, oh. it's it's. thanks for participating in this contest. We wish you the best of luck. Your stuff is always controversial, always gets a lot of reactions, and let them see what it looks like for themselves. And best of luck to that, Telly, and best of luck with your documentary as well. Thanks, Dave. See you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, that's it for tonight's news. If you want to help support this operation, help support things so we can do contests like the We Will Resist TSA and NSA Tyranny, then consider becoming a subscriber to Prison Planet TV. Your subscription helps to pay for this operation, and it's something that you can share with up to 10 other people at the same time. So it's a great way to spread information to help wake up your friends and your family. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Tune in to PrisonPlanet.tv for an extended broadcast. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Well, with flu season in full effect, the push for vaccination is really intense. But what they might not be telling you is you could be trading one danger for another. So we went undercover at two of the nation's top walk-in flu shot pharmacies to see what they had to say about the vaccine's safety and effectiveness. Hello, Hi. Uh, where do you guys do flu shots? Well, I don't know. I mean, do you think that it's like safe and effective and even There's, with all it, these other... It's 50 to 70 percent effective against it. If you do get the flu, it'll be a lot less. Severe. We had a tech that did get this shot, did come down with it, but it only took for like two days to bounce back. Mm -hmm. You, know As you can tell things are deteriorating. Is there any advice you can give me? Don't ever take a flu shot again. Now, I watched that <laughs> night with Dr. Oz, and I and, and we both saw him put that thing in my arm, and yeah. within 10 days, I'm You're, just struck down. I, you know, have, have you had a flu shot this year? No, I don't do that. I'm not going to get sick.
Well, see, the thing is, I got a flu shot and said I was not going to get sick, and see? I got sick. That's why I don't need to get a flu shot. So it's not 100% effective and may even cause the flu. But what do the pharmacists have to say about the Marisol, which you'll find they were very careful to avoid calling it mercury. It's a 